what we are going to do today is um, this is the grand plan. Um, I will talk uh, a bit about the layout, uh, what we are going to discuss today. Uh, first and foremost, what we will do is um, I will uh, share what I know about um, online learning. And then uh, later on, uh, Dr. Dayang uh, will take over and she will present uh, something uh, regarding our assessment. And uh, after that, we will have a Q&A session. Um, during during this presentation time, you can you can use two modes to actually interact with me. One is by um, doing the chat, and the other one is by uh, raising your hand. Uh, if you raise your hand, then I will know. But if it's too many people raising their hand at the same time, then I might just uh, ignore, and then I will try to do what uh, what you're asking about. Huh? So these are the two modes that you can actually interact with me, and then. Next, what we do is that uh, can you all um, meanwhile, uh, while we are just about to start, um, log in to a particular um, uh, web page called Mentimeter. I'm not sure whether you all have done it. Uh, if you all have done it, so please uh, log in to this uh, Mentimeter at uh, menti.com or you can actually Google it uh, using this particular phrase, uh, Mentimeter join a presentation. Later on, I will actually give you a, a particular um, a number and uh, then you can interact with me uh, directly regarding whatever questions that I'm going to ask uh, or interactive uh, uh, mode. Um, the whole uh, presentation today is going to be more on asking questions uh, rather than just give you highlights, but I will do a post a question on system thinking and then we will try to discuss regarding uh, uh, pertaining to that particular question. OK, let's uh, move on now. Now, uh, the first uh, things to ponder is, uh, are we going to continue teaching? Uh, I think uh, every one of us who are here uh, will know definitely it's a resounding yes. It's a big answer. Yes, we are going to continue teaching. Now, the next question would be, are you ready to offer online learning? OK, are you ready or even me? Am I ready to offer online learning? So for that, um, please log in to Mentimeter now and then we were going to do a, a, a short survey on Mentimeter. OK, um, the code, uh, the code for the Mentimeter is one, one, three, five, one three one one three five one three if you can start doing the survey uh, i would appreciate it okay thank you for your interaction huh? some of y'all have answered it um i think generally uh, most of us are uh, we are ready to offer that's very good huh? very good uh, there are some of you who has answered it as uh, unsure uh, it's good that nobody has actually answered no huh? Now uh, let's start. Huh? Let's start with uh, this this particular uh, uh, thing that I would like to share with everyone. Uh, this is uh, our Ely page. Huh? If you were to go go to the Ely page and scroll all the way to the bottom of the page, you will find this uh, few uh, resources for you uh, available. Huh? Um, in particularly, I would like to highlight two things that are very uh, useful. Huh? Useful if you want to start your online learning uh, experience. Huh? The, the one in pink here, Guide for Academics, huh? Looking for Ideas. Now, CAM has actually prepared this particular um, uh, page to answer your query regarding many aspects of online learning. What are the activities that you can actually do uh, uh, and engage the students? Huh? And the other one is Unimas Online Teaching Guidelines. Now, through this, this particular um, hotspot here, uh, if you were to click that and then you will find that there are some very nice uh, guidelines huh, that has given uh, to uh, everyone. Uh, you can access that. Now, in particularly, there are three guidelines here. Uh, the first one is the online teaching step by step guide. It's a very good informatic uh, uh, sort of like an infographic uh, step by step guideline. Huh? 
and the other one is more verbose. It's more of a, it elaborates to you everything that is in the uh, infographic uh, guideline. And then the last one, this is the one that I liked very much, uh, a compendium of online teaching. Now, this is a PDF file. These are all PDF file, actually. And, uh, and the third one, this, the compendium, is an active PDF file where they have amalgamated many uh, ideas into that one PDF file. And if you were to click on the active uh, hotspot on each of the query that you want to ask, it will take you to a uh, either a YouTube or an external URL to explain to you what and how you want to actually go about doing it. So this compendium is very useful. I hope that you will also find it uh, very useful when you are using it to do your offering of online learning uh, materials. Huh? Now, are you ready to offer online learning? And you, some of us have answered yes, uh, resounding yes. That's very nice. Now, uh, if you been to yesterday's um, uh, session with uh, uh, the DVC, he actually mentioned something uh, that we all have to do this particular online learning. Uh, we have to offer this online learning. And he also mentioned this particular phrase, uh, teaching is like breathing for academics. If we stop breathing, then we'll, uh, we are going to have in, uh, trouble. Huh? Um, so what, what is Unimas offering? Uh, Unimas has provided us with the hardware and software. And we, in, as a user, we will have to only provide our ability to actually offer this so-called online uh, learning uh, materials and so on. Now, um, here I would like to just briefly tell you regarding uh, what is uh, some terminologies and that we are misconceptions and terminologies that we are using. Now, um, I don't know whether any, everyone knows about what is online communication platform. Um, now, it is also known as online learning platforms uh, and uh, or it's also known as e-learning uh, uh, aka known as um, web conferencing platforms webinar platforms now all these are actually they are non-physical face-to-face communication platforms now unimas has actually bought two particular system one is called cisco webex team and the other one is called Microsoft Teams. Now, some of us prefer to use Zoom. I know that uh, some of y'all are still using Zoom. Uh, I also started uh, using Zoom in the beginning, uh, but now I've moved on to our next uh, platform since uh, this particular two OCPs are given to us. Sir. So now what is this OCP is all about? The OCP has been there for a long time, huh? long time. Uh, the private sectors have been using it for meetings and so on. But today, during this pandemic, we have adopted it to use for e-learning. Um, they have got, all these OCPs have got similar attributes, but they are not the same. Some have better features, some have uh, less lesser features. Eh? And um, my advice to everyone is that this is my second experience, uh, second platform that I'm, I'm trying now. Uh, I started with Zoom and then I went on to Microsoft Teams. I think if we master one platform very well, then you'll get to know in and out about that platform. Then you can you go to the other platform. You just have to look for that feature. So it will be very easy. So just master one. Choose one and stick with that and start doing it. They are quite similar. These OCPs are also very similar to our learning management system our learning management system, which is the e -Lib. If you see, they have the same thing where you put in your files, uh, where you instruct your students what to do. Uh, in OCPs, they are compartmentalized. But in blended learning uh, on uh, e -Lib, they are all in one horizontal uh, space that you can actually see them later. I'll show you those NLG later. Next thing uh, I would like to interact on, this, this particular thing is important because I, I need to ask certain things and... Uh, please log in to Mentimeter and, uh, and then uh, you go to again uh, and uh, I will give you the code very soon. Uh.
the number is three zero three seven two nine. Three seven two nine. Actually, can you say the genus please? Three zero three seven two nine. Thank you. Okay, I have one iOS, two iOS. Ashley, why is that the, my my page is still something that up and down, up and down? Um, you're talking my, about the Teams or you're talking about the Mentimeter? Mentimeter. Uh, Mentimeter. Uh, you have to go to the original beginning page and then punch in the number three zero three seven two nine oh i have to back again uh. okay ah yes you have to go back to the actual code where you input the code the code is three zero three seven two nine okay uh i think i can i can stop since there are hold on eh? i'm on, I'm on, on online now hello Yeah, uh, since there are equal number, uh, I've got about response from uh, 20 of you and there are equal number of iOS uh, users and Android users. Huh? I just want to highlight that WebEx, okay, WebEx, huh? if you're an iOS user, you cannot use it on your MacBook. cannot use it on your MacBook, but it allows you to use it on your iPhone, iPad. Okay, just uh, be aware of that. Huh? Android, no problem. Android, you can you can use it in uh, your desktop, your PC, and any other uh, devices. You can actually use them freely. The only restriction is that app is not available on MacBook. Huh? Just please take note of that. I discovered that yesterday when I wanted to present using WebEx and I couldn't do it on my MacBook. Now, uh, the next question is that uh, since we are all ready to offer online learning, the question is, are, are our students ready to actually engage us in online learning? Eh? That's the next question I'm posing. Okay, yeah? uh, this particular Mentimeter, the code is one one three five one three one one three five one three okay um i see that many uh, many are answering unsure uh, but there are some people who have actually answered no uh, but some of you all have said that they are ready yeah uh, so none of none of us are wrong in this instance uh, so what i'm going to share is that what we have actually done uh, and, but before that, uh, this is what we call um, online eight dimensions of uh, readiness. Uh. Uh, so if you can see all that eight uh, dimensions, one of that will stand very like a saw thumb. Uh. One of them will actually, out of these eight dimensions, there's one that stands out uh, like a saw thumb, uh, and that is devices and connectivity. Okay, Among the other seven, the other seven are user dependent. But devices and connectivity is independent of the user. So when it, when we say it's independent, what happens is that we need to know our student first. Okay, this particular picture I actually borrowed from uh, Prof Karim's uh, presentation. Uh, it's a very nice presentation where he tries to address how we should know our student before we actually do the online learning and so on. Uh. So you can actually see the presentation later. I will share with you this. Now, uh, the thing is, by knowing our students, um, Unimas has actually, what they have done is, has classified um, the users, uh, Unimas students, into three separate groups. Uh, the first one being very competent. They are able to participate in online learning. And group two, which is um, intermittent uh, reception on Wi-Fi, and they have the hardware so that they can actually participate in online learning. Now, the third group, which is the group three, 
they do not have the hardware and they do not have the connectivity. So these are the three separate groups. Huh? Please bear in mind, I'll refer to these groups later also. Now, one, two, three. Huh? So Unimas has classified into three, uh, our students into three separate groups based on their uh, ability to connect to the internet and also uh, owning uh, the hardware. Huh? Uh, and what um, Dr. Dayang and the team uh, did about uh, a month ago, I think, uh, correct me if I'm wrong, uh, Dayang, um, we had our own survey and we have found that um, most of our students are in group one um, and uh, and thank God that we do not have anyone uh, from group three. Yeah? Group three, there's none, uh, but, but we do have in group two. There are some students in group two, um, but this particular survey is uh, quite uh, comprehensive for phase uh, two, but not for phase one. Um, so what's the take home message from this data? Um, what what I suggested is um, we are looking at the denominator. Uh, once again, this is from uh, Prof Karim's uh, uh, presentation. Uh, he likes to use the word denominator where we look at the, the number of people who are unable, available to connect, uh, connect uh, to the internet and uh, actually, so if we do the best presentation, and they are unable to connect, so the the learning doesn't take place. So, uh, so this is what let's consider the lowest denominator. Now, knowing that for a fact uh, that there are people who are unable un, unable uh, to connect, so what we have to do is that how are we going to execute the teaching, or how are we going to offer uh, uh, in the sense that uh, what what are the things that precautions that we're going to take in order for us to go ahead go on to offer this uh, online learning. Now, there are two modes. Huh? One is synchronous and asynchronous. The synchronous one, uh, what we are doing now, huh? what we are doing now, it requires a lot of bandwidth and a lot of technical ability also. Whereas asynchronous is thing that you do through ELIP, uh, what we call another word for asynchronous is on-demand learning. You put all the materials, resources, the instruction, the learning design, the course design, everything into one particular portal, and you ask the students to go and visit it on their own uh, leisure. Whereas synchronous is the opposite. Huh? You need to do on real time. You have to execute it. So that is the one of the differences between synchronous and asynchronous. Now, I'm not going to go through all the details. Huh? You can read it on your own uh, when this thing is available for you later. Um, basically, uh, asynchronous will be more of like the student friendly uh, in the sense that connectivity will not be a big issue. Uh, whereas synchronous, there will be issues on uh, connectivity and also the hardware and so on. Huh? Now, cost of going online learning. This is the implication is not uh, for the person who's offering. Uh, we, for example, we we have the fortunate, we are fortunate because Unimas has already purchased Microsoft Team and uh, WebEx for us to use. And we can also use Zoom. But as for the student, uh, there are two implications. Huh? They either, we do not know whether our students are on prepaid or postpaid, okay? Even if it's a postpaid, uh, the data plan is limited. So the students have to, if, if they exhaust their data plan, they have to buy more data plan. But if they are on prepaid, uh, there's a study. Yeah? Um, recently, the WebEx uh, instructor from UTM, when they came over to actually present this uh, WebEx, uh, and she mentioned that um, students sometimes have to spend about 17 ringgit per hour if they go online on a synchronous uh, platform, uh, on a synchronous platform. So these are some of the implications that we have to consider when we are doing our uh, whatever material that we are preparing for online learning. Now, next, another interaction. Uh, please um, go to Mentimeter again. Uh, this time, which mode of online learning do you prefer? Which uh, mode of online do you prefer? I will give you the code in a minute. Huh? The code is 113513. 
interesting. Huh? I I get uh, the sense that um, everybody uh, there are some people who still want to do synchronous, uh, and uh, knowing the fact that uh, asynchronous is uh, much more user uh, uh, student friendly, basically, yeah, huh? student friendly. But I guess uh, if you want to go asynchronous, I guess there are some ways of how you can actually go do do about it. Huh? Now, uh, Unimas is actually trying to um, cajole, I can use the word cajole, huh? uh, trying to make uh, uh, the instructors to uh, to go on low bandwidth uh, for the online teaching mode. Huh? So um, this is one particular area that um, the reason they are giving is that the benefits is students can practice self-paced learning. Students with minimal internet connectivity can access your content. Students can easily view your content on mobile devices. So those are the reasons why they think that uh, going asynchronous is much better. So I'm going to just share with you basically what you need to do in order for you to actually uh, to make your learning content friendly to asynchronous uh, kind of uh, teaching. Um, first of all, video. There are some um, um, web websites huh, where you can actually when let's say, for example, uh, today I'm recording my uh, this one. Uh, hopefully it comes turns out uh, later. Now, once you've done this recording, what, what you have to do is that you will see that it is actually a huge file, a huge file. You cannot upload it into YouTube and you cannot go and uh, give it to someone else uh, easily and eh? you cannot uh, basically disseminate it very easily. The reason is that it's a big file. So you need to shrink it or compress it. Eh? The word compress, eh? that's what you want to compress. So there are here two particular websites eh, that I've highlighted here. Please take note, eh? Clipchamp and Clidio. Okay, these are the two websites that you can actually go in there and shrink your particular uh, video uh, into a smaller uh, size and then you can actually upload okay and similarly the audio files also can be done uh, similar fashion eh? so basically the rest of the um, slides eh, are telling you how to actually reduce your uh, file size okay and uh, recommended what kind of format do you use when you actually uh, post your materials online. Um, make sure that you don't post the actual format instead of getting it all to, into PDF, it'll be much uh, smaller. Now, um, this is about once you've done your online learning and uh, you need to have, a, you can't just depend on this. And then when you actually meet with students, Students would prefer to have some kind of a communication channel that can they can actually ask you uh, rather than being in synchronous. If you're doing uh, asynchronous, uh, then you will need to have some kind of a, a mode where you can actually communicate with them. Suggested ones are WhatsApp or Telegram. Uh, now, the first question that people normally ask me is that at least uh, three of my colleagues uh, who are from other faculties, they used to ask, how do you actually do it through a Telegram? You need to punch in their telephone number and everything. You need to keep their data in your phone and all that. There is a way eh, without doing that. You can actually do that. Eh? You don't have to key in their numbers in order to actually be coming in communication with them. Eh? I'll show you all how to do that later. Um, understand students readiness for online learning. We have already done that. We know uh, how the classification is. It's good that we don't have any group three uh, students uh, in our faculty at the moment. Now, this is what I've done for one of my uh, classes that I'm uh, doing at the moment. Um, use your WhatsApp and you create a particular uh, a group. Uh, maybe use your husband or wife for the first time and then create the group and then, then you can kick out your spouse later. Now, once you kick out your spouse, then what you can do is that you can have that name and then you can try to modify whatever materials that you want to put in and all that. Now, if you in the WhatsApp, there is a place where you can actually go and locate the barcode or the QR code, huh? QR code for the particular group. So once you've located that uh, QR code, you then 
take that image and post it on Elip. Once you've done that, what you can do is that you can blast that email to everyone on your Elip uh, group and tell them that please scan this and you will be automatically drive uh, to the particular WhatsApp group that you have created. So here I say that this is an attempt to see WhatsApp group uh, for a set of WhatsApp group for particular course. Huh? Alternatively, Android users try downloading an app called Barcode Scanner. If you're using an iOS, it's very simple. You just take your camera and then you start. It'll straight Safari will take you directly into that WhatsApp group. Huh? So now what's, once they are in your WhatsApp group, you can actually try to communicate with them. Huh? Uh, this can be for a small group or even for a big group. I haven't done for year one and year two because I think Dayang has already prepared uh, the year one year uh, in one group already. So that makes life easier. So um, for those of you who have smaller group to teach or if you have uh, different, different groups, you can actually do this. It's quite uh, simple. No? If you have any problem, please contact me. I've, I'll be no problem for me to assist you on this. Now, um, having said that, and that's the, uh, one of the things that we do for communicating with our students when we do asynchronous uh, kind of uh, teaching, available for designated time. The students uh, need to have a particular, you can tell them when to communicate and so on. Uh, ensure students' queries are responded within a specified time uh, and facilitate self-directed learning. They can ask you questions. It's much easier with WhatsApp uh, rather than uh, you going online and they coming online and trying to post the questions and so on. Now, one thing that I've learned from that experience is that uh, this is the number one thing. Uh, when you set anything uh, for a synchronous uh, or even for asynchronous or whatever, tell the students, set a reminder on their phone what to do and what not to do. Because many of the times the students come and tell me, oh, I forgot. They are now free. They are on their own. There's no supervision from uh, lecturers, only their parents might be with them. So they are free and they can, their minds can go on doing different, different things. Huh? So ask them to make sure that set a reminder on their phone and be prompt in whatever that they are doing and so on. That's the only thing that I find that it's a useful technique to employ. Huh? Now, <clears throat> next big question, uh, uh, how are we going to execute the teaching? I think some of us uh, think that they want to do asynchronous. Majority says uh, from my Mentimeter poll, they say that uh, majority are doing asynchronous, but some of you are still going to do asynchronous. That's great. You can still do go on doing it. Now, I tell you the trick now on the synchronous one is easy. You go online, you present your particular um, cost uh, information, that's fine, done. But for asynchronous, it's a bit more work, but it's user friendly. Yeah? The, the friendliness is towards the student. Whereas synchronous, it's going to be hard on the student. Okay, that's, that's the only difference that I can see. Now, next question is, how good is the quality of our execution, which is the teaching itself and the learning material that you're going to prepare and so on? How good is it going to be? So cost design, the number one thing eh, that we want to look at it is the cost design itself. So how are we going to do the cost design? Will you be able to provide a quality online learning? So I'm going to do another poll here. Can you please uh, participate? Eh? Okay, the code is 303729. 303729. I got the first one coming in, two coming in. Excellent, I've got some people who are very confident. Okay, I, I will I will publish all these results later where I it is anonymous actually, and I can I can publish this later for everyone to know. Um, well, the majority says that maybe, okay? Nobody said no, that's good news. Huh? Nobody said no, that means everybody can actually do a quality online learning. Huh? can provide a quality online learning uh, experience. So that's very good news. Now, um, cost design, like I said earlier, cost design is one of the things that you need to consider. And one of the things that you need to consider regarding cost design is the pedagogical principles. I've taken one example for you here. It is uh, Gilly Salmon's five stage model for online learning. So you can see the five stages here. 
and if you can try to read up on it and then understand what is the principles behind it and you can actually do a better uh, presentation or a better uh, presenting of your online material the key thing is the first thing is course design the design the learning design or whatever now the focus is definitely on the design not on the content development the content development the students can actually go on uh, on their self guided learning and get the thing but what you need to do is that the learning design what are the things that you want to do and give them the proper approach and the direction towards the content now this is one suggestion from uh, again uh, prof karim's uh, presentation uh, he has said that <clears throat> it's 70 20 10 the active learning for uh, online learning uh, so activities is the majority of it some closures and then reflection now again uh, he is the expert in uh, e learning and this is not cast in stone uh, that's what he told uh, uh, in his presentation he said this is not cast in stone you can cater to whatever uh, percentage that you want to you can have more uh, of your content and then have some meaningful activities and you can do some reflection at the end so this is up to individual uh, how they want to actually uh, do this now the key thing is he mentioned is bite sized learning everything needs to be in a smaller compact uh, form for the students to actually follow and make sense out of it so that's one of the thing uh, the process of learning through short digestible well planned units so that is the key thing now he has also given uh, a template or a or a particular model uh, that he has uh, envisaged for a 1 hour session so he starts with an activity every time starts with an activity and then a short lecture activity again lecture and then finally a reflection or a summary of what you have actually gone through and that's it so again this is a model it's up to you to actually start playing around and see what's your comfort uh, where is your comfort zone now i am going to share with you something that i have actually done uh, with one of my uh, uh, group uh, but i'm used elip uh, again uh, asynchronous uh, but i blended it with synchronous activity so i will just let you know this so clear instruction the design is very important in here i have actually uh, put down in number form uh, so nobody can miss out on anything you tell them exactly this is what we are going to do today this is a short period i i told them that through the whatsapp group i told them that this from this time to this time i will be available online you can actually um uh, ask me anything or post me any question i and i can uh, reply to your questions back huh? so i went online in a forum and started uh, executing this thing the ones in the green are activities huh? activities that they can actually have to do it on their own or they have to participate online huh? and then the last thing is the resources that i made uh, available for them so they have done it so you can see these patterns uh, are available on microsoft team microsoft team has got different different compartments where you can actually put all the resources and ask the students to go through it and then later you can actually have some quizzes and so on so you just have to go and explore and see how you can actually do it so after doing this mix stuff asynchronous and synchronous what i did is that if you can look at number 5 uh, participate on a survey regarding conduct of uh, asynchronous quiz on this particular topic so the quiz was on another day so the quiz is something formative huh? nothing to do with summative i just wanted to know whether they have actually uh, gone through this material and they are able to understand and the learning has taken place so that why the quiz was conducted so we did that quiz and i asked them when are they available and they give me all the time then we negotiate using the whatsapp group and i conducted a quiz using another platform which is socrative so using that platform they were able to participate with me uh, online real time and the result i gave them the feedback and that's that's done for that particular session so that's one way of Uh, mixing your synchronous and your asynchronous together but the synchronous was a very short time huh? the quiz only took about 15 minutes now we have done that quality of our execution the course design learning resources is very important you need to identify the learning resources 
content is designed to support self learning and then the content needs to be accessible to student including everyone uh, group 3 and group 2 also included not only group 1 uh. now and then the learning activities the learning activities can be many many different types uh. you can have quizzes you can have polls or some kind of opinions you can ask them uh, reflection uh, there are a lot of materials uh, that i can share it's all in the compendium you can go through it if you want to have different different types of uh, activities and then uh, as a as an instructor or as a provider uh, uh, like today for example uh, i was so comfortable with zoom and this is the first time i'm trying uh, teams uh, and i can see that there were multiple groups here going online so uh, that i will definitely uh, need to learn and try to sort that out not uh, not to let that happen again and uh, so that, that this is one uh, issues that we are asking that we can try other tools okay uh, i haven't tried webex uh, the first thing is that it put off me because of uh, i can't use my macbook so um, webex is one uh, other options that we can actually use so i will definitely try to try uh, use that uh, in the future so in here what we are trying to emphasize is that um, we need to use other tools and then uh, by using these tools we can also use our own elip to actually uh, do a lot of these uh, features uh, if you don't want to do using um, uh, this uh, ocps uh, and uh, like what i think uh, dr chu mentioned uh, if you want to do your use your ocps record your lectures everything capture all your lecture and uh, all the screen captures and all that then you uh, compress it and put it onto a asynchronous mode so that's one way of looking at it uh, how you can utilize this webex and uh, microsoft teams and lastly the million dollar question uh, or what we call trillion dollar question at, at this stage of our uh, era if teaching is done then the assessment must follow how are we going to do it okay uh, i'm not going to dwell too much on it uh, but uh, i will just share with you some aspect of what uh, some of the guidelines that the university have prepared um, and for the time being uh, for this uh, pandemic uh, time and uh, again my last uh, interaction with everyone uh, please go to mentimeter and i will give you the code for the next one do you know how to assess our students okay and the number is 303729 Okay, uh, final poll uh, uh, is about um, 33 of y'all have responded. Um, just by one, the not sure is more than the uh, yes. Uh, but I'm happy to see that most of us know that how we are going to assess our student. That's very good. Let's make life easy for uh, Dayang later when she present the next uh, next uh, topic. Huh? <clears throat> Now. Uh, what the university have done is uh, they have prepared a guideline for alternative assessment during this pand pandemic time uh, they have suggested to replace face to face written examination with alternative assessment so that's one uh, suggestion by the uh, university if opt for online written examination ensure students are familiar with the implementation so probably we start out with some mock uh, thing trial and so on let them experience it Uh, which i think uh, dr dayang will uh, uh, dwell on it more uh, later uh, she has actually done all this so she'll be more um, happy to share this um, now um, i showed you this earlier c1 c2 and c3 groups now the reason why they have classified is that they went on to do how you are going to assess so this particular um, infographic you can look at it and see how it is eh? um, so to me in my course what uh, i i've suggested is that what i'm going to do is uh, i'm just going to give the question to them ask them to do prepare it and then uh, they have to take a snapshot or make a pdf out of the their written exam and then submit it so you need to think of the implementation how we're going to do it and all that so that's one way of doing it so uh, we will discuss this later we have plenty of time to actually discuss on the assessment bit na now this is what i've gone through uh, we've started out with are we going to be able to continue teaching and then uh, all the big questions 
one of the thing, the key thing that we ask is the quality of our execution. How are we going to use the, the teaching uh, materials and so on? Key three key things, uh, course design, learning resources and activities. And when you're preparing online learning, uh, the thing is totally different uh, than you actually uh, giving a presentation of PowerPoint file of 50 or 60 files uh, pages in one go. Uh. So the student have to be engaged in what they are actually learning. And then finally, the assessment bid. Uh. The assessment bid, like I said, uh, Dr. Dayang will uh, uh, will do it later. So for the Q&A, we will wait until the end. Uh. We'll wait until the end and then we will do that part. I think now I'm going to uh, let uh, Diane come in to uh, do uh, a presentation. Eh? I hope everything will go well. I'm going to now transfer uh, whatever. I think I don't need to transfer, Diane. You you can immediately come in and share, isn't it? Your owner. Yeah, yeah, can can. Yeah. Okay, can you all see my uh, PowerPoint? Yep. Yes, 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 I can see. Yes. All right. Um, so uh, today I'm just going to share on how we do MCQ and BAQ. Uh, I know about alternative uh, assessment. It's just that most of us already vetted all the questions, you see, and <clears throat> uh, talking about confidentiality and all. I think uh, we just make use of what ELIP has. So ELIP uh, have quiz that you can convert into either MCQ or BAQ. So first you have to be uh, registered or enrolled or as one as an instructor in any of the course. OK, so that you can uh, put up a quiz or uh, questions inside ELIP. OK. If you have not been uh, enrolled inside any of the course, you can ask the course coordinator so that course coordinator can communicate uh, with ELIP owner so that they can put you in. All right, so you can become the instructor inside ELIP. So for setting up quiz. OK, can you see uh, the ELIP page now? Yes. All right, so this is the ELIP page for block nine. So before I can do anything to this ELIP page, first I have to become one of the instructor. And then for me to add any resources or activity, I have to turn the editing on. All right, so when I turn editing on, only then I can add in whatever resources or any activity that I wanted in this ELIP. So today I will add on this, for example, if I want to add on the quiz, I just click here. All right. So I will add on. Quiz. All right, so add to quiz. And then you name your quiz, for example, pathology. AQ and then this is the instruction that you can put so you can put here dear students blah 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 all right so this is the instruction okay so timing of the quiz you have to decide the date and the time okay when you want to open the quiz for access all right so you do this so if only for today you decide on the time maybe four o'clock and then you finish around five o'clock. OK, and then this is the duration of the exam. If you have like 10, 10 questions MCQ, all right, 10 question MCQ, maybe you give them three minutes because this is online. They have maybe lagging things like that. So three, maybe 30 minutes. So you do like that. All right, <clears throat> so grading. Grading and uh, you don't have to put an, in anything. OK. Lay out this, how many questions you want to put in each page. So I usually like like shorter, you know, so that they don't have to waste their time scrolling up and down. So five questions per page. 
All right. Question behavior. Yes, I will shuffle so that uh, one, one student to another student. OK, let's say they enter the quiz. The, the question one for student one is not the same as question one for student two. So you put there yes. All right. <clears throat> so for review options, for formative assessment, you keep these all ticked so that when they answer the questions, they get immediate feedback. But for summative assessment, you have to undo the tick here. So there will be no review after, no feedback after the questions. So you have to decide whether the quiz that you want to make is an is a formative assessment or revision or is it summative? Uh, so for summative, we will not will not provide any provide any feedbacks. Okay, appearance. I the rest you just keep it like that. So uh, you can save and display. Okay, and then you go back. Okay, so you you have this. All right, but you have no questions yet. OK, so you already have the page for you to uh, put up your quiz, but you don't have questions yet. So what you do is that at the same page, look at the administration down here, uh, lower corner. You see here question bank. All right, you click on the question. OK, you click on the question and you come up with all this question. All right. So you want to create new question. So let's say I want to do an MCQ. Okay, I will I will choose multiple choice and then add. All right. So question name, I will put pathology. Pathology. MCQ one. Okay, I name it like that because when I want to add to my quiz that I just uh, uh, format just now, it's easy for me. Okay, I have MCQ1, MCQ2, I just choose from the question bank. Because inside the course, uh, you will not have your questions alone. You have other questions from other lecturers as well. So you have to do an identification how you want to identify your question for you to easily add later on. OK, question text is your um, question stem. It is question stem. All right. For example, I put here uh, numbers or colors then. Colors in color includes. OK, default mark is always one. OK, general feedback just Leave it blank. If you are not sure what it is, you can just click on the question mark icon. And they will have explanation here. All right. So this is MCQ. I wanted to do MCQ. So for MCQ, it will not allow one answer only, isn't it? So multiple answers is allowed. OK, so I put there. So shuffle the choices. Yes, tick this one because if you shuffle the choices, meaning option A for question, uh, student one may not be the same as uh, option A for student B. So each individual student have a shuffle options. All right. Number the choices. Usually this is the format that we use capital letter. All right. So in this case, Num colors includes I will make uh, three answer which is correct. All right, two answer which is uh, false. But in this elite format, uh, no marks will be given for knowing the false answer. Marks are only given for knowing the true answer. All right, <clears throat> let's see how it works. OK, so. I put here blue. OK, so I will make three answer correct, right? So three answer correct. If they choose three answer correct, so I must uh, give the weightage for each of the answer around 33.3% OK, so 33.3% OK. Red is also a color. So I put here also 
33.3%. Yellow is also a color. <clears throat> so I also give 33.3%. So if they, when they answer later, when they tick all three, which is true answer, so they got one mark, which is 100%, right? So I make the fourth choice, which is false. I will say uh, cat. So this is not colors. All right. <clears throat> so for this one, the weightage for a well, false answer is the same weightage as the true answer. It's just that you add in the minus mark. So if they wrongly click on this answer, it only cancel out or minus one true answer. All right. So I think here I put bird, maybe. All right. So minus 33 marks. OK. So I want to see, all right, whether my questions are OK or not. I save the changes and continue to edit. Why I need to do that? I want to preview the questions. All right, there. Right uh, below the, the the questions just now, you preview. OK, so this is the preview. So I already tick uh, blue, red, yellow. So 33%, 33%, 33%. So they got correct. All the answers are correct. So they got full marks. OK. So let me see again. I will start again. Okay, because I told you just now it is minus marking, isn't it? So let's say I say cat, red, yellow, bird. And I don't want to tick that one. All right. So I submit and finish. This is just preview. Eh? So you see this answer, which is 33%. This answer is minus 33. So you got, you tick the wrong one. So it will minus the right one. So this one cancel each other. The, the total mark is zero. OK, what happens if I just, you know, click the only the wrong ones? OK, because uh, this is minus marking, right? So should be minus 66%, isn't it? Right, but that will not happen because uh, the minimum mark is zero. OK. <clears throat> so, 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 you know, if you do not designate any mark. We can't hear you, Dayang. All right, I have to okay. share again. Uh. Which part was I lost? The last bit, only the last bit. Okay. All right, I just want to remind everyone if we do not uh, designate any marks to the false mark. Uh, the student can actually tick every boxes and then uh, score perfect mark for all the questions. So that's why we need to put up the uh, designate uh, weightage to the false answer. And uh, before we run the MCQ, I did it with uh, year two. Uh, on this Friday, I'll do it with year one. Uh, you have to make your instruction clear because uh, Tell them to only tick true answer. All right. Only choose or tick true answer. If the answer is wrong, do not tick. Or if they are not sure, do not tick. All right. Otherwise, they can be penalized for that. All right. So this one again, I show you the the, the full marks. OK, for for the same thing. All right, <clears throat> so let us save the changes. Uh, Diane, can I can I ask a question? Yeah. Um, does that mean that uh, every MCQ question have to have 
three options that is true and two. No, options. not necessary. Not so the mathematic, uh, the mathematic for that is that. Hold on, ah, uh, I'll share with you. Yeah, the mathematic here. Uh, okay, let's say I have true and true two true answers. All right, so I will uh, give the weightage for each fifty percent. So if they tick true answer, do two of them, so they already got full marks because you do not give any mark for the false answer. Unless they tick this one, then they'll be wrong. So this will cancel out the true answer. All right. Uh, as I said, the minus mark is similar to the weightage of the true answer. Similarly, if you have four true answers, so each one of it you give 25, and then the false answer, just put a minus mark, uh, minus sign there, so you get minus 25. So if they tick this one, it can only uh, wipe up this true answer only. So this one will cancel this one. The rest you got the, the rest of the marks. OK. Um, that means the, the rubric uh, for this MCQ now uh, would be to to identify the, the correct response for the stem. Yes. Okay, got it. Uh, so you you have you have to you have to instruct the students so that they very clear only choose correct answer, and for MCQ they can choose multiple correct answer. Oh. No, it's no more like true and false. So what you're going to the heading should be choose the correct answer. Or yeah, choose the correct answer. Yeah, yeah. The correct answer. That's all. Yes. So this okay. is the way we, we change from true and false. We say that the, okay, this question is MCQ, true and false, but this one more choose the correct. Just the question should be just choose the correct answer rather than true and false questions. Choose yes. all questions. Uh, and that's why it's clear. important yeah. important for you to run a mock exam with the student. Yes. Yeah, run mock exam with them uh, with the feedback first, then they see, then they are familiar with it, and then they can they can do already. My, my right. suggestion mostly like you have to go for quizzes uh, with the student so they can know what uh, how to play around with the question or answer the questions. Yes. Most of the time, I think what we did share is single answer because uh, we are not sure before how to do it. I think now we know how to do it. Uh, it's different with uh, BAQ, okay? BAQ is different. Same, you can you can just okay. Later, can you see it? All right. Uh, can you see my elite page now? Yes, yes. All right. So for BAQ, Dayang, Dayang hold on, nah. Dayang, uh, I think uh, Miranda has got a, a question. I guess she's raised her hand. All right. Yeah. Miranda, you have a question? Miranda, I can't hear. <laughs> oh, we cannot hear. Okay, just continue to look. Then okay. we see. Yeah, maybe continue. she. Uh. Okay. Uh, all right. So let us look at BAQ. BAQ is much uh, simpler. All right. Again, you put question name. This is inside your question bank just now. Uh, the administration here. All right. The same thing. In I'm still in question bank. Okay, so I will put the uh, pathology BAQ. All right. So what is the question? Uh, oh, never mind. Mm, what is the most? Ah, uh, <laughs> Phone. All right, never mind. So default mark again zero uh, one. 
Okay, feedback. I did not put anything here. I will not put anything here. So just now for multiple choice, you put multiple answers, right? For BAQ, just one answer. Okay, again, make sure you tick shuffle the choices. All right. So A, B, C. So handphone apa ni? Okay, maybe I put Samsung. Samsung lah pula. I don't know which one is the, the maybe iPhone. All right. So you only have uh, seven, four, four choices ah, for BAQ. Huawei. All right. What's the other one? Oh, oh, oh. All right. So which one is the <laughs> iPhone maybe? Ah? All right. So because this one is only one answer. So this one you give 100 marks. Okay. The rest you will not give any mark. Don't give any mark. Okay. So what you can do. At the bottom most again save the changes and then you want to preview so that's why you want to continue editing okay so you preview again preview all right i'll share with you the preview uh, page okay mark Okay, not answered yet. So I will say iPhone. Submit this preview, eh? preview uh, page. Submit. Uh, so I got uh, one mark. Okay, I got uh, total mark, one mark. So what if I say Oppo? Okay, zero. Okay, you can only choose one because you already put there only one choice. All right. So that is done for BAQ. So BAQ is actually easy. All right. Uh, MCQ purpose uh, is just the mathematic that you have to work up. OK. So then you go back to the page. All right. So you save changes. OK, now you want to go to the quiz just now, isn't it? So administration down here, the top half, you, you still have your pathology exam that you want to do just now all right so you click here okay remember just now you already set up everything here but you have no questions yet so you edit quiz all right see the small button add here okay they come out like that so where is your question from question bank so here i can easily identify so just now it's baq so i just tick baq from the question bank. Okay, when you do uh, your question in question bank, the default is always the course name. So don't do anything to that. Okay, because they will keep everything inside this course. All right. So you add the selected. Once you tick the selected questions, you add it to the quiz that you want to do just now. All right. And then you save. Okay, then you go back here can actually preview the quiz. So if you click that one again, navigation here, you can preview the quiz now on your quiz page. OK. So start attempt. Uh, so this is how it looks to the student. Just now I put five questions per page, so we'll come up five questions per page. All right. So like this, uh, what is the most expensive phone? I say iPhone. So what is the commonest uh, polyp? So endocervical polyp. So finish attempt. So then return to attempt, submit all and finish. Okay, this is what the student will do. OK, so they will have this answer to them. So this is what it looks like to the student. OK, so this is just review. So you know what the students see. So you finish review. Similarly with uh, MCQ. So that's that's what you do for 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 this uh, BA, uh, for this uh, ass online assessment. I think we do not have problem with BAQ and MCQ. OK, uh, but uh, for Essay. Uh, 
I think uh, Puan Sharifah is around, right? Puan Sharifah? Is she still around? I I didn't see her that now. Ah, uh, okay. Uh, ada? Ada. Ah, ada. Ah, uh, uh, Puan Sharifah and her team is trying to 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 what? Uh, to do the essay question. So once we get that uh, ready, um, then I will do it with the students, and then maybe uh, we can have this session again and 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 teach everyone how we want to set up an M MEQ questions. Previously, I did MEQ questions, but uh, the problem with ELIP is that uh, they only have one box for question and then one box for answers. And our MEQ, you know, it is an integrated, so we have multiple sub questions. So I did multiple sub questions in that uh, essay type in ELIP and then students have lots of problems. OK, so see how first on this essay uh, format, uh, ELIP is perfecting it, all right? Uh, so I think Ashley also give a suggestion uh, that we post the, the questions in ELIP and students answer on their own and then they will take photo or screenshot the, and then they can just upload in ELIP like that. Also can, but see first on the the format that ELIP uh, coming up with later. I think Sharifah Norizan will teach uh, on how to do that. Okay, any questions? Mm -hmm. I prepared... Uh, uh, hold on. I prepared this one uh, for for you to, to you know, it is a step by step on how to do this. So I can share with you all if you want. Yeah, if we can put this in the resources, la, resources place. Eh? Uh, yeah, yeah. Where can we put this in inside? The, oh, yeah, inside this meeting, I will upload the PDF. Huh? Yeah. All right. Dayang, Dayang. Yes. Since Sharifa Noriza is here, I just wondering whether she can help us or not. I noticed that if you put like 10 questions on one page, students can easily print the whole page with all the questions. So we da, won't da, da. be able to recycle the question. I try it, it can. Tapi dia shuffle. Even though we shuffle, the question is all there. Student can just easily print and then keep it. So we won't be able to recycle the question in future. I, uh, want, ah, can I think in any, in any mode, student can capture. Whether he leave or any other mode, student can still capture. No, I just wondering whether Sarifa Norizan can help in calm setting. In the student, when the student enroll as a student, uh, the enroll as a student, you deactivate the print button so the student cannot print the whole page. If they can capture maybe from the screen, it's only one question. If you use the task as far print, uh, you can print the whole set of questions on one page. Yeah, I think I think I understand what uh, mm -hmm. topic. Uh, can can okay. Sharifa or Lizans help us? Is it possible that we don't allow the student to click the print button? Right click, huh? No, you know, right click. If on Elite, you go to far there, print preview, you can see all the questions on one page nicely. Then the student can just print and keep. Mm. Yeah, I think I think that you need to ask Izan la, whether it can be disabled ah. or not. Ah, yeah. Whether Izan can help us to do that or not. And then uh, for, I think, phase two, I think MEQ, they are not allowed to go back to look at the previous question. Can. If students can just print and keep, they can always go back and look at the previous question. No? Actually, um, about MEQ, other universities tried to do it. Uh, we are using the same platform models, but MEQ cannot be done on models. So they suggested to go for SAQ or SEQ. So this is the plan, my plan B for this. 
So I don't think we are going for MEQ. Um, I think it will just go for SEQ or SEQ. Okay. Maybe Sharifa will later on if she can do it because other universities already did it, try to do the MEQ, but they fail. This is what shared know. by other uh, universities. I show you. Uh, where is the elip just now? Okay. <clears throat> this is the online template that. Uh, you just go to review one of your quiz. Then you can see if you go to far print, you can print everything on that page. Ah, uh, I'm not going to need to look. The the one that they are constructing at the moment for for our faculty. <clears throat> Uh, Nariman, uh, um, right. while uh, while Dayang is uh, preparing that one, um, okay. you might want to look at uh, Socrative. Huh? Socrative has got one function yeah. where it allows you to navigate the questions huh, based on the instructor space. That yes, means yes. the instructor yes. will actually click, then only the next question will come. Next question will come. So it's but time based. Okay, that one should be uh, synchronous. This is the problem. We don't oh, know okay. what time the student going to answer the question, but they need to follow. They cannot go back to the previous question. While uh, in models, this platform, they can go to the net, the previous question. Mm. Okay. Uh, other yeah, universities tried to do the MEQ, but they fail. So I did uh, see uh, again. Um, so this is uh, the template uh, not tested yet. All right. I think uh, Pon Sharifah and the team is trying to perfect the the what uh, format inside edit. So uh, they can put question main stem here and then sub question. And I I requested for them to like for each each sub question there will be uh, captured mark here so that because uh, for MEQ different questions sub question will be marked by different lecturers. So this is the preview of the page that come up for MEQ 1. So MEQ 1 with sub question 1, 2, 3 and then this one, I'm not sure whether it can be done or not, all right? So this is uh, what they are planning. Not tested yet. So hopefully if, <laughs> because uh, the thing is most of our MEQ is, most are already vetted. <laughs> well, for this uh, question, Dayang, it's like seeing that the question is not related to the STEM, or sometimes you, you talk about reputation and you ask about the anatomy of thyroid, so this is the issue when we you want to do it uh, like this lah. Except one page, memang full for that question only. When you yes. turn the other page, you have to change the stem. Macam kita tukar juga lah. Uh, Sometimes yes. for us, we change kan the progress change, change, of the change. disease itself till the patient pass away, get discharged, cover for all these things. Mm. Mm. So, tak, tak sure lah whether whether boleh buat ke tak. Mm -hmm. There's some university, they move uh, away from MEQ. They buat KFQ, nak replace MEQ. So, macam KFQ, the character macam MCQ dengan BAQ juga kan. Macam mana? KFQ? KFQ. Uh, they use KFQ to replace this all. They go for the short notes, the essay atau the short answer questions. Uh, Which is direct. Macam tanya soalan, because, just uh, answer question easier. Yes. Yang itu boleh juga actually. Uh, but then, uh, itulah. Uh, 
we'll see if this, so you check if this question I... vetted already our question not vetted that's why we uh, can change allow us to change i think um, seq and saq question can easily vet because they're, they're mm -hmm. straightforward because Straight in, uh, meq um, is integrated you have to really think what what right. related yeah. questions that you need to ask from Except there to go for high tux long taxonomy la for your question rather than just direct what is i want to go to how and who why this happened and all mm. uh, rather than much like, describe the anatomy of thyroid which like, i'm very uh much like, direct and uh, this one, know it, I just know it. For example, I just right? want, uh, yeah, example. I just want to highlight this one is for anatomy, uh, this one is physiology. So I just like describe pathology, describe <laughs> so because I cannot give her the, the exact questions. Uh, yeah. yeah. Uh, so so this is the way different uh, from us. Uh, we'll see now. We'll see. Uh, we'll we'll see. see. Uh, what we'll about see. Oski Dayang? Oh, Oski, uh, I'll oh. show you. Uh. Uh, uh, hold on. Yeah, sorry, you all use OSP, right? Not OSP. OSP. Oh, yeah, OSP. OSP. Uh -huh. uh, we did it before. So this how they, this is how it looks like. Kita dah buat dengan student. We, we did with a student. Uh, so initially, we, we follow the five minutes uh, duration for each OSP. Mm -hmm. And then uh, what happened is that Never mind, it's here in question bank. Is here. Uh, they cannot finish the OSP. So this is the OSP. Okay. Uh, let us look at this OSP. <clears throat> okay. So if you want to preview the question, hold on. I'll share with you. Can you enlarge the picture? Apa dia? Dia boleh enlarge picture tak? The hospital. Ah, uh, uh, This is what the student can see. Okay. Macam ni. About some of the computers, my computer very clear kan? Boleh nampak. Uh, but some of the computer memang tak nampak. Uh, sometimes they want to enlarge kan for all these things. I, I'm not sure that yeah, they can, they can because they preview can. Pun, uh, even preview we cannot do anything with the, uh -uh. the, the pictures. Uh, so because there only one there is only one box for questions. So everything we put mm. inside this box and student type the answer in this box. Mm -mm. So give them five minutes. Uh, five minutes. But now the other day they say uh, we extend it to eight minutes. Uh, yes. uh, we we have yet to have another mock or speed exam for eight minutes. See, because they say, uh, again, when you upload the picture, uh -huh. and the, the the size have to be small, but, but, not to, uh, yeah, but not to compromise the clear uh, image of the picture. Lah. Uh, uh -huh. Because otherwise they also have, uh, they say, take time to, to see the picture, doctor. So they uh -huh. lose like, one or two minutes already so so i say okay maybe extend for each of osp for two eight minutes and we see i don't think too long is this but i will uh, uh expect some student later will have problem because of their internet uh, access mm -hmm. i think for for that student uh, I, I will extend the time for that particular student because they say sometimes the line unstable. If it rains, there goes my line, you know. Mm -hmm. uh, to me, as long as they can answer the questions is is, is good enough. All right. <clears throat> okay. okay. I think we can go for like, question. you need to put the maximum for 10 minutes ke, for one question. Or you want to treat uh, the student privately. Because sometimes they say they cannot download the picture. Uh, 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 those uh, inv invigilation later will be through WhatsApp. So if they have problem, they will immediately inform the invigilator inside the WhatsApp group. So we identify this, this which student. 
Kalau ada WhatsApp uh, tu lah masalah. Later kalau lah later. Uh, uh. Because I think that is the fastest way they can inform us. Yeah. Hmm. Okay. Dayang for OSPI OSPI. Uh, in the real exam, we are not allowed the student to go back to the previous question. For so, if we run it online in the one of the setting, you must set it. Student cannot go back to the previous question. Otherwise, uh, no, you give eight minutes per session. Uh, I informed. Uh, what? Not in the setting. Just now in your question setting. Got uh, one of the setting under question we have layout under layout. You have to set the navigation method. Okay. So this student answer OSP one, then they will proceed OSP two. If they have extra time, they can finish. They cannot go back to OSP one. Okay, that one. Uh, we will have a look later. Because the one, the navigation, uh, it gives you duration of the whole exam, right? No, uh, the navy under layout, the navigation method to you should put sequential and then your new page must be every question. Mean one page only have one question. So after they answer question number one, they will pick next question number two. So they cannot go back to the first question. Oh, okay. We will see. Kalau macam ni, hold on lah, I'll share with you. So we were not allowed then to go back to the previous question kan for OSPI? Ah, uh, no, no. Only for OSPI kita tak. Uh, we don't allow them to go back. That's why we limit up until 8 minutes. Right? Edit setting. This one ah. Uh? Is it under layout? Under layout, you click. Then show more. Every question. Okay. Then free. Navigation method. Navigation method. You choose sequential. sequential. You click on the arrow. Ah, click. All right. What about this one? Repaginate, boleh. I'll try this one later. Ah, you try. So we don't have we don't have enough questions to to show. Okay, I'll try it. Okay, any more questions? Ashley, passing over to you. Ah, uh, they can ask. Uh, anyone has any question? Ah, uh, Dr. Dayang Grace here. Ah, uh, I got a questions on MCQ. Uh, now, in the MCQ, there is no mark for knowing a false answer. So yes, I can no say mark. no marks for false answer. So when I'm going to come out of MCQ questions, yes. if I only put one false answer, of course, I'm going to help the student, right? Yes. If I'm going to put three false questions, the chances of the student to get minus mark will be higher. Yes. So uh, in one paper, uh, you do not fix any rule that how many questions should should have how many false answer, right? No, no. Okay. But right. Uh, by right, uh, uh, we will avoid all option true, all option false. Uh, so uh, basically, you will prefer that all the false answer will be around at least two to three. Two to three, yes. Okay. All right. Okay. Thanks. All right. Mm. I guess the rubric for all instructors is minimum two right answers. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Anyone else and have any question? If, if we do not have any questions, uh, any other questions, I guess we can uh, we can stop the session or... Dayang, do you have anything else? No, <laughs> no it's just that uh, I will oh. share with you the, the PowerPoint. Uh, you have to try it first, then, then you are uh, comfortable okay. with it. Dr. Oh. Prof. Thomas. Oh.
Prof. Thomas? Where is Prof. Thomas? Tak, dia hmm. delay sikit. Dia duduk jauh. Oh, I see. Ah, <laughs> duduk the other side. I guess uh, I, I just checked uh, uh, and you asked me regarding the QR code and all that. I didn't prepare uh -huh. a QR code, but uh, I think this platform allows you to download a file for the attendance. So I can I'll try to do that later and see hopefully it'll come out and I'll pass you the attendance list. Okay. And uh, the other thing is that uh, after this is finished, um, I guess all the uh, all the people who have attended, uh, there will be a survey done by CAM. Uh, I will send it to everyone and then uh, please uh, do uh, do the survey feedback and uh, get it back. I think uh, Kam will receive the feedback directly. OK. Thank you. So, things you link. I like to hi, I like to know um, any drawing can be done. Uh, let's say we like student to draw uh, anatomy or certain structures. No, you cannot. Cannot, so uh, we cannot set that kind of questions. Yeah, yeah. Okay. Uh, no, no drawing, please. <laughs> uh -huh. okay, 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 okay. It will take a lot of time. Yeah. Yes, a lot of time for them to lot take a time. picture and then upload. Uh -huh. uh, they yes. will compromise the line. Okay. If you are no, no diagram now from now no onwards. Diagram. No diagram. Diagram also prefer now. Even if you want to ask for algorithm, also it's not prefer preferably no. Okay, no diagram from anatomy yeah. <laughs> and so other discipline. Yes, yes. This is our limitation here because we don't have time uh, for the student. Except it's a uh, take home exam. That one is different for anatomy. I'm I'm just thinking out loud, uh, Nariman. Please comment on huh, if it is not possible yeah. or what. Okay. Um, if we were to have a phone dedicated with a WhatsApp, um, that the student can directly connect to that phone and they snap the photograph and they send. If it is a group WhatsApp, then there'll be a problem because uh, they will. Everybody else can see everyone's drawing, yes. but if the drawing is sent to one particular number. And that number receives all the, the students, this one. And that phone is just dedicated for exam purpose. I mean, this is just a long shot. I'm just yeah. saying this. But, no? but we don't know. Some, you know, from the questionnaire, we receive uh, the answer of questionnaire. Some of the students, they don't have even smartphone. So this is the issue. Uh, With the survey we that we, we got, uh, they were quite uh, comfortable. Huh? Everybody, uh, nobody was in group three. I mean, we discussed this uh, earlier. I saw the the output uh, that was the survey done one month ago. Uh, phase two has the best respondent rate, and yeah. there was no uh, group three. Group three is the one that doesn't have the hardware and doesn't have the connect the has the connectivity problem. So there's nobody under that category. Oh, I did. Yeah, that survey was done yeah. before yeah. they went home. So uh, the survey done after they went home, they asked students who have. Problems oh, okay. hardware yeah. and uh, we internet. have many surveys. The last survey they have problem like Sabrina said. Ah, okay, okay, this okay. Is I the think the problem think now we are facing. Uh, that survey needs to be uh, updated, no? Updated yeah. and. Uh, oh, oh, no, the our things are still in campus, so it doesn't represent a true situation, mm -hmm. Okay. Yes, so correct. So uh, that that needs to be disseminated to everyone, no? Uh, may I know uh, for these questions, right? Is there any way that we can just upload? So, for example, like we have uh, questions ready in Word, instead of typing one by one, can we just upload it somehow in MCQ or BAQ? I Is wish. It I wish. Copy and paste. You want from to copy, copy and paste, right? From uh, copy and paste. Is there an, Can it be done? I, I doubt. La, I don't know. That I think. It, we have confidentiality can answer that question, issue But we can there. bring it forward to them and uh, if she's not around, we can uh, ask them. I think it's uh, it's not, at the moment, as far as I know, no. Uh, you have to do it uh, manually. Yeah. Mm -hmm. 
Imagine for us, we have a 60, 300 questions for only MCQ and 300, 300 for BAQ. Uh, what I think, we uh, suggest Dayang, uh, uh, for phase uh, one, uh, each discipline will uh, name their representative to key in their question. So the coordinator is the one who choose. So each discipline would know whether their question is wrong or right when they key in the question. So kita, we have a few uh, personnel who will uh, key in the question later and making sure during the preview that the questions are correctly entered. So the coordinator or the, the coordinator of the block, oh, we just have to choose the questions. <coughs> I think with what the guideline that Dayang has prepared, uh, that will be easier for people to follow that. And then I think that will also uh, uh, save the trouble of any uh, wrong input and all that uh, for the question. So uh, the representative can actually do a better job with that guideline. Now. Because uh, for phase two, the, our vetting is quite different compared to phase one. Once the vetted question already is belong to the phase two coordinator, Phase one, they don't know. And a phase, uh, sorry, the the contributors of the question, they don't know which set we are using because we vet three sets of questions. I guess so you now all we know this is quite different. Uh, we also vet three three sets, but uh, here are. Uh, we, for phase one, I think we want to minimize mistake. And we only have a few uh, members in the vetting committee. Uh, not, not, not everyone. So, so, I mean, they, they, they know the rules about confidentiality, lah, things like that. Any other question? We have five more minutes. Any question from Nasi? There's a question in the meeting chat. Okay. Uh, Haniza. Oh, okay. From uh, Dr. Haniza and from Prof. Thomas. Okay, Prof. P.T. Thomas, he asked any lim limit of the number of questions we have to save in the question bank? Mm, I don't know. So far, uh, if for, for the phase one courses, everybody is putting questions in. Kena tanya orang elip lah. Orang elip siapa kat sini? Hi. So far. Uh-huh. Uh, so you can put uh, as many questions as you want. Uh, also answering tadi, the, I think Dr. Sabrina's question, right? On on uh, copy paste soalan. Right, right. Uh, it, it is possible, tapi ada cara secara technical, ada coding lah. So kita takut menyusahkan. We just do not want to uh, make it hard for the lecturer to do it lah. Uh, macam ni, uh, kita kalau phase 2 dia lain sikit. Uh, phase 2 dia akan uh, uh, know the question. They the one who choose the question after we vet at the faculty level. First faculty, then dean's level. So the dean, we decide which set we are going to use. So the, only the coordinator can upload the questions. Uh, and we make the corrections and all. So seorang je yang buat. So if but phase one, they said to reduce this burden on the phase one coordinator. Other the contributors who will enter the questions. So right. the, the line scale. Lah. <laughs> so, for anything, they can always contact us. We can okay. try to work things out. See how. Lah. Sabrina, contact her. Okay. <laughs> 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 I cannot imagine uploading all the questions myself. <laughs> uh, Tak, I rasa phase two, uh, apa dah, professional exam final tak kot. Not, won't be online. Okay. Uh, Haniza. 
the department only two to three person. The one who will try to put the question will be the coordinator. Yes, uh, the answer for Haniza is yes. The department with one only two to three person, the one who will typing out all the questions will be the coordinator. The PT Thomas. Okay. Uh, Sharifa, boleh jawab tak ni? You don't have to type the question every time, but just click the question Hello. we want to Hello. include every time. Hello. You want to reuse the question, is it? Uh, Prof? Prof. Prof. Thomas? I think Prof. Kena Hello. unmute kan the mic, maybe. Uh. Hello. Hello. Yes, Prof. Thomas, is that you? We can hear you. Ah, yes, yes. Yeah, yeah, so we can hear you. Suppose we have, a, say, we want to create, a, say, a, a big bank of questions, and so that we can use it uh, every time you conduct the quiz. Uh, so it may be reused. Sometimes we'll have to reuse the questions. So is there any problem? We can uh, upload as many questions as we want, then click on the number of questions we want for the particular quiz. Um, yes, you can reuse actually the, the questions Yeah. Uh, and create as many questions as possible. And you can actually let the system to randomize the questions to be used in a particular quiz. Oh, I see. Okay. So you can create as many questions as you want in the question bank and you mm. can in categories and whatnot. It, it's up to you. And then you create a quiz and in different quizzes to be used in different classes or different semesters you can actually randomize the questions so you can choose like the system oh. can put uh, can use 30 out of the 50 questions created in the, in the <coughs> bank so the question bank can be imported from one one class to another class or to another page is that answering your question okay 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 thank you all right Ashley, can you answer Dr. Anissa's question? Um, no, I, I, I think that's what Dayang told earlier. The, every one uh, discipline will give one particular rap and then that rap will actually uh, submit the question or write the question into the uh, the elip. No, no, her question is how are you going to prevent that the student that they don't communicate with each other? Uh, we, can't. Uh, we, can't. Uh, we can't. We can't. We can't. We, we, we can't even have uh, uh, invigilation because students can't even have two devices I mean, open up during the exam, one device to look at them, one device uh, for them to answer question. So, invigilation wise, it is compromised. But this is uh, uh, the students, first, uh, they don't have enough devices, and then, second, they don't have good uh, online access. So, we compromise on invigilation on that part. When when this question was brought forward in a online uh, assessment or uh, alternative assessment, the question was put forward by the instructor asking, why are we looking at students whether they are actually copying? Yeah. Uh, we we can actually do the question in a way that uh, we try to make uh, minimize that error and uh, basically play with the time and other factors. Yes, correct. Mm. And instead of direct question, you just go higher in bloom. They need to think mm. and answer the question. Right. P.T. Yes. Thomas. Uh, yeah, I think my suggestion is we should not give too much time for the student to Google the answer and all this. Yeah. So yeah. limit the time for each question and uh, one should not be allowed to go back to the previous question. 
once you have answered one question, you should not be able to go back and correct it. Yes, I agree with that. Uh, if you have some exams, international exam, they do that. You just once you click on the answer, you cannot go back. Okay. Yeah. Then it's. Uh, yes. it's uh, yeah. Uh, Siti Mariam. Uh, earlier, Doctor Paul said uh, the student can print the screen. Like Madam Te said, they can just click on review, uh, then uh, they print the, everything. So we need to enable, right? Or disable mm. the button. Or disable, yes. Uh -huh. yeah. But I think if you limit the duration of time, they don't even have, they don't have time for that. To communicate with their friends, that the master. Uh, because I did before with them the more exam, they can't even answer the question. The last mm. question, pun, yeah. they don't have time. Uh, so if if you have just enough time for them to answer, they will not be able to do anything else uh, unless uh, they're really prepared. Uh, <coughs> it was being uh, mentioned. Uh, what I mean by print screen is that not print, you know, but print screen is it, in your keyboard. You can see a print yeah. screen button, just uh -huh. one button. I know, I know. With one button only. With one uh -huh. button only, they can just capture everything and save. Um, so I think my opinion is that there's nothing much we can do about that. So mm -hmm. in the future, if you want to recycle the question, you can. But you can always make a new question or after a new question, everything will be new. Lah. So meaning to say that the question is tested here and in the exam, it can only be used as an exercise in the future instead of recycle everything. There, there, there is a mean to disable even the print screen on your on your keyboard. Nah? Um, the one you have to explore, lah, explore. There is a method to disable where you cannot print. Even your print screen will not be uh, functional. But I want need to explore and see. Um, I think I understand what you're trying to say, Paul. Um, yeah, we can we can try to explore that now. Okay, uh, Gabriel atau Anissa, she said if somebody is late to check into the exam, will they be excluded? Okay, there's one more to procedure. Uh, this is our SOP. We'll see how many minutes uh, they are late to enter the exam. Okay. That one we need to really discuss later. Usually we allow within half an hour, right? Uh, then after that, they're not allowed for the two hours exam. They're pretty quiet. Really close good. Yeah, mm, well, yeah, I think most of them have uh, uh -huh. left or what, I don't know, sure, but uh, yeah. Yeah, okay. uh, with reg Hello. Uh, yeah. With regards to the uh, copy and paste one, um, you can actually use, hello, can you all hear me? Yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, you, you can actually use the browser security inside the ELIP itself. Um, and uh, that which will prevent the students from using um, the co copy and paste um, um, apps, uh, but um, icons in, on the computer itself. Okay, great. Then, then we can disable yeah. that. Uh, you have to enable it, you have to select it. Um, so then um, the students will not be able to do anything uh, with regards to the question itself. The only thing that they can do is like um, what um, Paul and who is, uh, and Miss Day were saying that they can capture it using their handphone itself. I think if the students are, uh, what do you call this, well-versed with this, they can even screen capture the whole exam. <laughs> so yes. it doesn't make um, any difference. Um, um, no, screen capture, they won't be able to do it because um, if you put under your, what's that thing, um, in the ELIP itself, if you use your browser security um, when you are editing your questions, um, then they will not be able to, um, it, will, it will basically be blocked itself um, with ELIP itself. 
what I mean is using screen recorder. Those oh, a lot record. of the students oh, yeah, are gamers. True. Gamers always screen yeah. record, <laughs> so they're oh, yeah, very well versed in that. <laughs> yeah, right. Um, then the other thing is that um, we can actually also see who is the, doing the quiz. Um, if you enable the uh, um, there's one one um one icon inside Elip that you can actually capture who is actually do, answering the quiz. Is it the students themselves or somebody else? Um, that is in, in view uh, in line with the proctoring itself. Yeah, I guess this, these things are good to know, and uh, I think if we everybody knows about it, then it can we can implement it and and do it as a SOP, you know, and how to monitor them and all that. Yeah, It'd I think nice if Miranda, you can share that uh, with all of us. Uh, okay. Um, I need X. Okay. Um, it's I'll I'll share my 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 slide. Uh, my my what is that thing? My WhatsApp here with and uh, not my WhatsApp. My Elip here with you to see. Okay, so this is the one that I'm talking about. This uh, browser security. So if you click on here, it basically allows the students to be prevented as far as possible to use um, the uh, the things called the, the copy and paste itself. So this is the browser security. If you all are worried about students um, copying their questions itself. So it's under the navigation also called extra restrictions on attempts. Then the other one, I think, um, in terms of um, whether, uh, if you think worried about students sharing answer, maybe what we can do, we can shuff, uh, use the word shuffle within the questions. So the answer options will basically be different across the students itself. So that's one of the things that you can actually use also. Then in terms of wanting to know whether who is answering the questions, uh, who's doing the questions or the quiz, um, we can actually put here um, to get the students to show their pictures. So if you put it here, then um, it will be shown on the screen itself during the attempt. So it makes it easier for us to check whether is it the students who's logged in to do the quiz or is it somebody else? So that is an, another a way of us to do monitoring itself. Huh? So those are the things. And they're all under, uh, well, basically I, I've already got some quiz on my on my course itself. So those are the things that you can do to update your quiz itself. Is the show picture uh, real time or how is it? Uh? Sorry? Is the show picture that now, uh, is it real time or? Um, the one that I, this one is, I, this, I, I only just read, um, noticed this, uh, just Baruch lah. so I'm, I haven't attempted it, but my previous group that I have done with, uh, basically I, I allow them to do the quiz with navigation uh, forward. They can't go back to answer the previous questions itself. But in terms of this one, I have the face, I have not done it yet. So I can't answer that one. Uh, the the real time and also uh, if the real time also then the the monitor has to have a webcam. If the webcam is not uh, functional, then we will not be able to record it. Yeah, that's true. Um, bless some of the PC, um, like like my current office PC doesn't have a webcam, so you can't yeah, see. True, I know. So. <laughs> <laughs> okay, I guess uh, there's no more questions. Uh, thank you very much. It has been two and a half hours. Uh, thank you everyone for participating. Uh, we're going to end the session now. See you around. Thank you, Ashley. Thank you, Daya. Thank you, Ashley. Thank you, everyone. Okay, bye. Bye. Stay safe. Thank you so much. Bye. bye. Thank, thank you. you. Bye.